Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today, Monday, the start of the week and a start also for the new videos, the new series of video updates during the week from Monday to Friday. You guys know already, there's always a video update on Bitcoin price action and some other stuff sometimes. And before you say something else, this is just a t-shirt I got from my travel to Russia as a tourist. So don't get any wrong ideas about me. So uh, without any further delay, let's go to screen share and let's see what's happening with the start of the new week. Okay, let me zoom in here. So this is the price of time model. As you guys know already, this is a weekly chart of a projection that uh, the next stop could be around October, maybe November if we are a bit delayed uh, regarding the previous cycle. But this is the projection of what the price top and time might be uh, for this bull cycle. So as you guys know, the blue candle pattern is the 2013 cycle. The yellow candle pattern is the 2017 cycle as counted from the bottom, the previous bottom of the bear cycle. So regarding this current cycle that we are in, which is the, the one represented by the green and red candles, we are now a bit delayed as compared to the 2017 cycle. So we are a bit below the actual price of the cycle then in 2017. And we are also a bit delayed in time compared to that cycle. So that's it for the price to time model. Now, guys, I wanted to show you something a bit different today. I was, let me just go here to my Twitter account. So here we are, guys. Uh, on Sunday morning, I posted this tweet. And the tweet reads, keep an eye on Bitcoin today. It will surprise you. And of course, the entire day passed and only during the evening, we started to see something on Bitcoin, which was, let me take you there to the chart of Bitcoin. And let me show you guys the one hour chart. This is it. This is the thing I was referring to. So I posted a tweet on the 27th. Let me see here around this period around 10 a.m. And when I saw this big red candle and the sell signal, I around that time I posted the tweet. I don't remember exactly if this was 10 a.m. or 11, but I remember I posted this during the morning, just a few hours after I woke up and was uh, seeing the charts. And around this area, I posted that tweet. And then a few hours later, still on Sunday, this happened this big candle to the upside here happened. And I was, of course, expecting a kind of move like this after watching carefully watching the charts and analyzing all the signals and all the indicators. And some people then asked me uh, on Twitter, um, <laughs> Hank Jones, of course, said that uh, I must be a whale because maybe he's trying to insinuate that I know something that uh, most people don't. But actually, that's not true. This is just technical analysis. And of course, then I posted uh, someone uh, asked me, how did you spot this seller exhaustion? What are the signs? And then I made the Twitter post uh, with everything that I was watching carefully. So I will take you guys through this process so that you guys uh, see the same things that I saw when I was posting that. And I, I felt and I analyzed and I understood that some kind of move to the upside was coming. So first of all, let me just start by the simplest one, of course. And Let's go back to trading view and let me just delete this. And I will show you now the four hour chart. And this candle, this is still loading. But one of the first signs, of course, was this, this V shape recovery on the four hour here, then uh, a retry of the 50 period SMA on the four hour, and then this rounded bottom, which did not go at the same level as the V shape recovery, because this was around the third, the 28, 900, 
28,800, something like that, thousand dollars, of course. And then we had this rounded shape bottom just after that, which went to around 30,200 or 30,100, around those numbers. And of course, in my mind, I immediately saw that this was an Adam and Eve kind of bottom. But as you guys know, I said this already in previous videos, the Adam and Eve kind of shape for, for a bottom is not so relevant on the four hour. This would be much more relevant on the daily chart or the weekly chart. However, this is a small indication, but still an indication that we might be seeing some exhaustion here for the sellers and possibly a price reversal to the upside. So that's one of the first signs I saw. So if you guys see this here, of course, let me just put it a bit in context for you guys. So this is one V shape here. And then of course, after that, you guys see this rounded bottom here going back up again to stop exactly at the resistance of the 35,300, which was the resistance also for the previous swing high. And then having this kind of V shape and uh, Adam and Eve bottom, which is the round, Eve is the rounded one and the Adam is the V shape one. So that's it. This is one of the first uh, signals I saw. Let me just remove that. The second was this MRI bottom on the four hour and this occurred around 5 p.m. on the 26th of June. So the previous day on Saturday, uh, already in the evening, there was this uh, MRI bottom on the four hours. And also, of course, the previous day on the 25th of June, we had an MRI bottom on the daily chart. So we had an MRI bottom on the weekly just a few weeks ago, then we had on Friday, an MRI bottom on the daily. On Saturday, we had an MRI bottom on the four hour. And of course, this was showing already some exhaustion from the uh, bears trying to sell what they didn't have already. So these were the first signals I saw on the chart. Uh, then I went to the pro indicators chart. And of course, I always start with the four hour. But I always see the when I see the context warning here, it means that this range is mature already. So we should go one step uh, higher to a higher time frame, which is the daily chart and check what's happening there. But however, as you guys know, this big channel that we have here, which you will see again in the one one uh, on the daily chart on the pro indicators framework, you will guys see that this entire move to the downside here inside this range channel should be almost over or at least showing signs that this could be over. So another sign I saw in the four hour was, or in fact, this touch of the support context. And here you have, we touched the support context and it immediately went back up, forming a green hammer on the four hour. So this candle touching the support context, which is the gray box down here and going immediately back up, reversing this trend, this big trend that has been coming down, shows me that the support context is very, very strong right here. And the, the, you know, the, the bulls that are waiting to buy were exactly at that point over there. And that's one of the reasons why we immediately rever reverse to the upside. Of course, another sign that this move was coming was this higher low. So as you guys see, we go up, we touch the resistance of the triangle, we come back down, but the next swing low is higher than that low. So of course, this also tells me that this move has a lot of strength to the upside. Then, of course, not just the four hours, but also the pro momentum, uh, not just the four hours framework, but also the momentum showed me something. So in this area, you guys exactly on that area where we had that big week to the downside touching the support context, I have a bull signal. So I have the blue background here on the pro momentum, then I have a bull signal indicating very, very strong support and reversal to the upside. And then after that higher low, exactly on the higher low area, which is up here, I had two bull signals. 
which are the blue dots that you guys can see here. Two blue signals here indicating bull momentum and very, very strong reactivation of the price action to the upside. So when I saw all this, I saw that a move was coming and I posted that on Twitter saying, watch Bitcoin today because it will surprise you. And in fact, it did. And we were even able to break the triangle, the top side of the triangle to the upside. Then we came back down, retest that triangle top, and we are now above it, just trying to get rid of that resistance around the 35K to in fact continue to the upside, probably having found a local bottom and some reactivation of the price action to the upside, going for a third range boundary. And now it's time to show you the daily chart also part of that analysis i did and this is the daily chart on the pro momentum on the pro framework indicator and as you guys can see here this is the channel that has been um you know engulfing this entire bull market to the upside since the explosion of october last year so since october 2020 we started to go exponentially up and this channel here on the daily is a very good indication of what the bull trend we are still in. So this is still a bull market. And as long as we don't break this channel to the to the downside, I will the, not just the channel, the channel and the moving average, which is coming here. We, so as long as we don't break that to the downside, to me, this is still a bull market. So when then I went to the daily chart and I looked at the daily chart. And of course, you guys know that according to the pro, the pro framework rules, we had a first range boundary there. Don't mind those range boundaries you see in orange because this was for the four hour chart. But if you look at the one day time frame, this top at the top of the range was the first range boundary. Then we had this move Elliott wave style to the downside with five waves and then we touched the bottom of the range channel and by all means with the rules of the pro framework indicators this is a second range boundary so this is the first range boundary when it when we touch the top of the range this is the second range boundary and you guys know what happens after the second range boundary happens we go for the third range boundary. Now, where this range boundary will be, the third one, no one knows, that's guessing the future, and that's not why we are here in this channel. We are not trying to guess the future. We are adapting to the market conditions to trade those conditions. And of course, being this a second range boundary, this means speculation area to go long, because the probabilities say, after forming a second range boundary, the bigger probability of what's happening next is going up for a third range boundary. And you guys can see that on the four hour chart and all these ranges here, the smaller ranges inside the range that you can analyze and you will always see that after a second range boundary, you always get the third range boundary. And only after that, you can have a breakout to the upside, continuation of the trend, or you can go lower for a fourth range boundary, making this range mature. And then you have to adapt to those conditions to be able to trade again the range. And this is range trading. So this is one of the strategies of the pro indicators. Now, if we have a second range boundary here, of course, the biggest probability of what's coming next is a move to the upside. And that's why after all these signals, I said, keep an eye on Bitcoin today because it will surprise you. Of course, I didn't want to say we are going to new all time highs or we are going to the mid range uh, part of the of this range channel here or anything like that because we don't guess the future in this channel that's for the other guys the other guys will tell you the future all the time here we will tell you these are the conditions of the market right now and this is what i will do for those conditions how i will adapt to trade this range or that range or this trend or that trend so I posted that tweet and someone asked, and uh, in fact, several people asked me also in the Telegram group, by the way, don't forget the Telegram group for this channel, t.me forward slash fu money, you will be taken to a page where you can click the button and you will be invited directly to that Telegram group, or you can just use the Telegram app and search for fu money, and you will see it on top of the results. So 
Some people asked me on the Telegram group, by the way, very bright people on that group. And I said, well, I even posted a tweet and you guys can see it here. I will show you. This is a tweet I posted with my answer this morning before recording this video. I posted that these were the main points that took me to believe or made me believe that we were going to have some kind of move to the upside and we did. So the first point was touch the bottom of the range forming a second range boundary on the one day chart. I already showed you guys that. This is that chart that I was showing just now and we touched the bottom of the range. So this is not yet confirmed, but probably this will be the second range boundary. The second point that took me to believe that is the support context was not broken to the downside, of course. And this means on the daily chart, I will also take you there here. This is the support context on the daily chart. And you guys can see that the support context, which is the gray box over here, was not broken to the downside. And that's the green candle that was really, really leaving a big week behind, but we didn't go below the support context. So I saw a lot of strength buying that dip. Then going back to the tweet. Sorry, guys, zooming in and out and changing apps at the same time. It's not good for you. The third point was five Elliott waves completed the fourth Elliott wave. And this is really important. I did not show you this yet, but I will show you now. This is what I've been showing lately. So this is my Elliott wave count for this bull market, the complete bull market. I will just extend this a bit there and there so you guys can see it better. So this here is the Elliott wave count that I've been plotting for this bull cycle. And if everything is confirmed, and it, I have to add here, the fourth wave is, not, is still not yet confirmed. But if this is confirmed as the bottom for the fourth wave, um, we might be on the verge of the fifth wave of the Elliott wave count to complete this bull cycle to the upside. So, of course, when I was talking about this five waves down here, you can actually see them. So this might be the completion of the fourth wave of the Elliott count to the start of the fifth final wave of the bull cycle, which might take us to around 200k or something like that. 200 more, uh, sorry, 20 more, 20 less. But I guess if the Fibonacci levels are correct, and I showed you this in a previous video, you guys might want to check the live stream of Saturday or the recorded video of the last Friday, and you will see the Fibonacci counts here, which indicate the fifth wave could go to this level around the 200K, something like that, more or less. And then going to the tweet again. Three bull signs on the four hour chart, which I already showed you, those blue dots on the pro momentum indicator. We had three bull signs in a row just pointing to the upside, saying that the momentum was with the bulls. Then the support context on the four hour touched and not broken. So again, the support context on the, on the lower time frame of the four hour, which I will show you just next. Here, you have to change this to the four hour and then you will see when this loads exactly there. So this is the support context on the four hour. We just touched it by a hair and then went back up again in a fury. And then the final point I wrote on that tweet was the MRI bottom on the four hour chart, which is the first one I showed you guys in this video. So all together, all those indications together led me to believe that on yesterday we would have uh, some kind of explosive move to the upside and we went up something like two thousand dollars one and a half thousand dollars something like that i didn't exactly saw the difference in price but this is how technical analysis works and people usually say technical analysis is garbage because uh, you cannot predict the future well we are not here trying to predict the future we are here speculating on probabilities and that's what technical analysis is so i'm not trying to guess the future i will leave that to the other Portuguese channels or 
international channels, whatever. Uh, in this channel, I tell you the market conditions are these ones and the probabilities of this happening are bigger than that happening. Now you have to speculate and risk manage those probabilities. And that's how technical analysis works. It's very simple. I just wanted to give you guys a bit different view on technical analysis today so that you understand how this all works and how you have to put all the dots together in order to have an opinion or in order to have an opinion meaning tweeting something that might happen but also at the same time have uh, a big picture about the probabilities of something happened uh, of something going to happen uh, and not that other thing going to happen because the probabilities are just smaller so that's it so guys i hope you enjoyed this uh today um this is not the usual an uh, analysis that we provide here you guys know already let me just go back to the charts you guys know already that uh, what we usually do is to show the market conditions and show what prob probabilities are in the short or medium or long term to happen. So for now, what I can tell you guys and going back to the daily chart here on the, on the pro framework is that the biggest probability now is that we are going to the upside to try to form a third range boundary on this range on this range channel this huge range channel that we have here which represents still as it's pointing up it still represents a bull market unless this is broken to the downside of the range and we broke also this zigzag line you guys see here which represents the weekly uh, sorry the monthly the monthly um moving average Unless we break this support context, this trend channel, the green zigzag, and the moving average here, this is still a bull market. So I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. This is a range channel. We just formed a second range boundary, and the probabilities tell me that from here, we might be starting a reactivation of the price action. Of course, I'm not saying that we could not accumulate a bit more, but this could be the beginning. The bigger probability is this could be the beginning of a new move to the upside to find a new third range boundary. Now, the big question is, where could that third range boundary be? The indicator tells me that if we overcome this 35,000 resistance that we have here, the next level of resistance will be around the 40K, and then the biggest one will start around the 46, 47, maybe 48. And this corresponds to the trend channel that you guys see here, which is the red zigzag and the green zigzag. So this is the most probable area of range for now. This green zigzag from here, which is now around 27,000. And this red zigzag here, which will start to form now around the 46,000 maybe 47 if we start to go up and the trend channel also reverts uh, reverses to the upside but then you have the final big area of resistance and that is the gray box above all this which will start around the 53000 probably 54 if next uh, if next month we start higher than we are right now so this is the, what the indicators tell me, where the resistances are, where the supports are, um, and all the context that involves the price action of the moment. And then you have to take your own conclusions from there. Okay, guys. So let me just stop the screen share. And you guys know, of course, I have, uh, I have been using since last Saturday a new background set of images. These ones are from Portugal. And I just wanted to change a bit uh, the look of the background. Soon enough, I will go back to the Bitcoin ones, of course, as this is mainly a Bitcoin analysis channel and Bitcoin news, which will in the future start to be more frequent. Uh, and some other stuff that I have already uh, in line for you guys, but I will not talk about that right now. But and 
in any case if you enjoyed the content of today don't forget gently touch the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and don't forget to join us on the telegram group so don't forget t.me forward slash fu money or if you just want to search for fu money on the app itself you search it and it will be on top of your results i hope you really enjoyed this video today and now a final word for you guys all right let's roll hey let's be careful out there Okay, guys, let's roll and be really careful out there in the markets. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.